above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began, above all kingdoms, above all Above all wonders the world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified, lay behind the stars Welcome to our circuit evening service. Our th theme for this evening is taking time out to listen to God. Well, we've certainly had a lot of time, but even in lockdown, we get busy. Billy Graham chose that song that you just heard for his own funeral. He was a man of God who took time out to listen to God. So now let's relax in God. Let's in this moment take time out to worship, to praise and thank God. Whatever your week has been like, Jesus is with each and every one of us, right where we are in our own homes. 
and wants us to experience his peace. So relax into your armchair. See Jesus sitting with you in your room. And let's talk to him in prayer now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are with us. Whatever we are going through, the joys and the sorrows. We thank you that you love to hear the praises of your people. You love us to relax in you, to rest in your presence, to know your peace and your arms of love surrounding us. But we come, Father, to say thank you for your goodness to us, for lifting us when we need lifting, for carrying us when we find it hard to walk, to rejoice with us when we are celebrating. We praise you, Jesus for all that you have done for us in our lives. And in these times of uncertainty, we still come and worship you because we know your praise lifts us to very courts of heaven. Thank you that this evening we are going to listen to you and learn to do that every day, to take time out, to be in your presence, to experience your glory and your peace, knowing that you love us so dearly. We praise you, Father God, for your love, your care, your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus, we praise you. Amen. And we're now going to join in the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So now we are going to um, hear a reading. Uh, Tom will read us a psalm, Psalm 46, after which we are going to sing a song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, which is taken from one of the verses in that psalm. A Psalm of David, Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear even if earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam, let mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God himself lives in that city. It cannot be destroyed. God will protect it at the break of day. The nations are in uproar and kingdoms crumble. God thunders 
and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world and causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear in two. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honoured by every nation. I will be honoured throughout the world. The Lord Almighty is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. May God bless the reading to us. Testament reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. It's a well-known story of Martha and Mary. Pam will read this to us, and it will be followed by a song that we can sing together. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you. The song is actually a prayer from our hearts to God, that the Lord would reveal to us through his word what his will is for our lives. Today's reading is taken from Luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42 at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. 
Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness. That the seen today in the rags of love and the deeds of faith. Speak, O oh Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. When I used to work as a doctor, before I retired, life sometimes seemed so busy. It almost seemed as though I was like a hamster on a wheel, running faster and faster, trying to keep up, but not able to get off. In the mornings, I'd go into work, I'd see the patients on the ward, I'd go and do an operating list, I'd go to see my secretary at lunchtime, I'd go to a clinic in the afternoon, and often I'd be on call the following night. Some evenings there were local preachers meetings or church councils. Other evenings I was busy preparing services. And then on a Sunday I'd attend services, I'd play in the music group or I'd take services myself. And that brought us round to the following Monday when everything started off again. I'm sure some of you must have felt the same way. You were so busy looking at the small things trying to keep up with life, that you fail to see the bigger picture. And that's so easy to do. In the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, 
there's a favourite psalm of many people, Psalm 46. This is a psalm that was written by a group called the Sons of Korah. And they were, if you like, the music group or the choir of their day. They sang in the temple in Jerusalem. And this is a responsive psalm. In other words, they'd sing the first half and then the people there would join in and affirm what they'd sung in the second half. Psalm 46 is a psalm that talks about God's faithfulness. It talks about the hope that we have in God, that no matter what happens in life, God still loves us, God still cares, God still has a purpose for us. It was written to apply really to the Jews through all the ups and downs of their lives when they were in exile. Whatever happened, they knew that God was with them. God was still in Jerusalem where they felt that he lived. God would return in glory to Jerusalem and bring them with him. And that's still the hope that Jews look forward for today. Psalm 46 starts by saying, God is our strength and refuge, a ready help in times of trouble. And it's a psalm that applied to the Jews of that day, but it's been used by many people, many nations, in many circumstances since then, when they faced troubles, when they faced difficulties. God is in control. But perhaps we know it best nowadays for verse 10, which says, be still and know that I am God. That's a song that we sing sometimes in church services. It's a song that often is somewhere near the start of the service. And I've often thought of it in terms of as we come into the service, we leave all the cares and worries at the door of the church to concentrate on God <coughs> and worshipping him. And that's a marvellous and wonderful thing to do. But I think in many ways it perhaps doesn't do that verse justice. Because what it was really trying to say is that when things look tough, when things look difficult, when you've got 101 things on your mind, so many cares, so many worries, then take the time just to step back from that situation and realise that God is still there. God still loves you and God is still in control. In the New Testament, in Luke's Gospel, there's a very familiar story. The story of Jesus <coughs> going to see Martha and Mary at their house. In fact, we're told that it was Martha's house. And that's perhaps the reason she behaves as she does. Those of us, particularly ladies, who've invited people round to their house, I'm sure will know the feeling that Martha had. You want things to be clean. You want things to be tidy. You want to give a good impression. You want to make sure that the food is up to standard, that it's cooked properly, that it's ready at the right time. I'm sure we can all empathise with Martha as she runs around trying to do everything. And we can also realise just how upset she must have felt when she saw her sister Mary doing absolutely nothing and not lifting a finger to help. And finally, she becomes so fed up with the situation that she goes to Jesus and says, look, tell Mary to stop listening and come and help me do things. And you can see Jesus turning to her <coughs> and saying, Martha, just calm down. In this instance, Mary's doing the right thing. Stop rushing around and listen to what I have to say. 
You know, sometimes I think Martha gets a bad press. A bit like Thomas in the Bible is known for being a doubter, despite the other occasions when he appears and he's got such a Christian faith. Martha is known as the non-spiritual one. Sometimes we can look at that passage or we can think that it's trying to tell us that being prayerful, being spiritual, being contemplative, being a thinker is so much better than being a doer in the Christian life or in the church. But I don't think Jesus is trying to say that at all. Later on in Luke's gospel, he actually says, when the disciples ask who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, he actually says those who are servers. No, I think Jesus is actually trying to say, at this particular moment, at this particular time, stop rushing around, Martha, and take the opportunity that you have. An opportunity because I'm in your house. An opportunity because you're a woman and I'm a man, but you are able to sit and listen to me. An opportunity that might not come your way again. Make the most of it. The other things will wait. Look at the bigger picture. Take a moment to think about what that means to us today. To stop rushing around and make use of the opportunity. Last year, few if any of us would have dreamt that the early part of 2020 would turn out to be as it has been. For many people, it's been a difficult time. It's been a time when they've had to face problems with COVID virus and illness themselves. It's a time when people have lost loved ones. It's a time when people have been alone. It's a time when people have had to look after children 24 hours a day. It's a time when some people have had to go to work and risk their lives caring for others. But for all of us, whether we've been at home or working, whatever our circumstance, it's meant that we've had to stop doing what we did before and look at life in a different way. For some of us, it has been an opportunity to be still and think about God. But all of us have had an opportunity to reassess things in a different way. I wonder what these last few months have done to your spiritual life. Mine's changed, but I think probably for the better. Perhaps we've had more opportunity to th read our Bible. Perhaps we've had more opportunity to pray. Perhaps we've had more opportunity to join in Zoom meetings, WhatsApp groups, join in with services on YouTube or Facebook, meet people from other parts of the country who are like-minded, get a fresh perspective on things. We've had an opportunity to assess where we were and to try and understand where we should go in the future. We've had an opportunity to step back and say what's important. I wonder if we've made the use that we should have done of that opportunity, praying and asking God, where does he want us to go and where does he want his church to go? Because I believe that we've had a once in a generation opportunity to stop and think, are we doing the right thing? Are we spending our time, efforts and energy really extending and working for God's kingdom. 
Some people want the church to go back to how it was as soon as possible. I have to say, though, I don't think that really is how I feel. I think if we do go back to being as we were, we've probably missed a great opportunity. Think of the positive things that have happened during the past few months and let's not, not lose sight of them. So often in the past, things to do with church administration, our faith, sorting out problems have actually taken over from what Christianity and our relationship with God really should be about. Now there are many, many things from the past that we should cherish, that we should hang on to. But not everything. We shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but sometimes the bathwater does need to be changed. Let's think about how we could do things differently. Let's think about what's important in the church. Let's think about how we can take the gospel message in a real new and vibrant way to people in their own homes, in their own situations, in a way that perhaps we haven't done before. We've just passed the time of Pentecost, where we remember that God gave his Holy Spirit to those first disciples, and he continues to give his Holy Spirit to us today, to work inside us. As we go forward, let's pray together that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we will really be able to bring his kingdom in a new a vibrant way to people in our society, to people in our church. Amen. We now come to our prayers for others. Some members of our circuit are now going to lead us in those prayers. Father God, Thank you that you are part of your, we are part of your creation and a part of the family of humankind. Help us to worship and adore your holy name, giving thanks for all the blessings that you have given us. We come to you asking you to show your compassion for the whole global family that is in turmoil and who are burdened with many fears at this time. Come to us during this time of social distancing as we are not able to mix freely with each other without restrictions. Hear our cry to you, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will heal our world and our country. Guide all leaders throughout the world to work together for the benefit of all people. In this time of epidemic and racial tension, we ask that you will sustain workers and business owners who are worried about loss of livelihood as a result of coronavirus and civil disruption. Hear our cry to you, O Lord. Father God, we place all the sick and bereaved into your loving, healing arms. Strengthen their hearts and minds in the midst of the turmoil they face and give them peace and hope. Uphold and encourage the many who are working tirelessly on the front line, bringing comfort to those in their care. 
We offer thanks for the wonderful job they are doing so lovingly for others. In a moment of quiet, we offer to you those known personally to us who need your healing, comfort or support at this time. Hear our cry to you, O Lord. Creator God, hold us in your gentle embrace and comfort us in our despair and need. Remember all of our Sutton Park Circuits family and all our officers as they continue to minister to the locality that you have placed them to serve. We thank you for the creative ways that have enabled us to keep in touch and give encouragement to each other. We are mindful and ask for a blessing upon those who aren't on the uh, bandwagon of me modern media and may well feel slightly isolated. We ask you to put your warm arms around them and know that they are loved and let them know that we pray for them and think of them dearly and they are loved. We ask this in Jesus' name. We ask this with the Holy Spirit in our soul. We ask this, mindful of God, the Father, the Creator. Amen. <laughs>
we close our time together by joining in singing the grace. The tune may be new to some of you, but I'm sure you'll soon pick it up. If you'd like to keep watching after that, there is a short video of um, how church might look like after lockdown is lifted and we're allowed to meet together, but differently. It's by Bethany Baptist Church in Wales. Good night and God bless you. We at Bethany Baptist Church have put together an informative safety video to reassure you that we have your health and well-being in mind as we return to church. As you enter the church, you can expect a warm and friendly welcome. You'll be greeted by the pastor and will be given the option of a socially distanced handshake. All necessary equipment will be provided. In advance of each service, you'll be provided with hymns that will be played during our time of worship to participate, we would ask that you would pre-record yourself at home singing along to each hymn. At church, you will then be instructed by the pastor to press play in unison at the appropriate time. Then sings my soul, then sings my, my soul, God my Saviour God, God, God to thee, how, how great thou art. It is vitally important that we as a congregation press play at the exact same time so that our voices can be united in perfect harmony. To ensure that we comply with social distancing protocols, the Sunday offering has been slightly altered with your safety in mind. 
as well as cash, we now accept all major credit cards, including American Express. The offering bag has been modified to accept contactless payments for your convenience. We at Bethany always enjoy a time of fellowship with tea, coffee and refreshments being served on a Sunday evening. Can I assure you that this is still something that you can participate in at the end of the new services? Milk and sugar will be provided in your pews and all you have to do is avail yourself of your preferences. If you do take your drink with milk, then please take a mouthful before being served your tea or coffee. The pastor will serve the hot drinks while maintaining a safe distance. This will ensure there's no cross-contamination. If you take sugar, then we have disposable spoons for your safety is our priority. Of course, if you prefer your refreshments without either milk or sugar, then your preferences are our priority. We at Bethany always enjoy a biscuit with our tea or coffee, so they too will be served in similar fashion whilst adhering to government guidelines and meeting the social distance requirements. There will be a wide choice of biscuits available and also those that meet dietary requirements, whether it's vegan, gluten-free, lactose intolerant, whatever it may be, all are available upon request. Baptisms will still take place during these unprecedented times. They will be modified slightly to ensure the safety of both the pastor and the baptizee. If you are interested in a baptism, then please fill out the form as you leave the church. As we say goodbye, it is our primary goal to ensure that you leave church uncontaminated and with a peace of mind knowing that you have been kept safe during your visit with us. On exiting, you will be thoroughly sanitised to ensure that this goal is achieved. We do thank you for visiting with us at Bethany Baptist Church and we pray that you had a blessed time. Oh, it was so lovely to, to see everyone and such a blessing just to be with everyone in church and to be all together even though obviously distancing prevented some things but I really I really think we've been able to come back um, properly you know we've managed with the social distancing and yeah, it's been a blessing. Oh, it was such a blessing being back in church so lovely to have a fellowship it was so sweet it was well worth the sacrifice. Yeah I, I know there was some resistance to uh returning to church after all the social distancing, but uh, I, I don't know what the fuss is about. I think, you know, uh, we can maintain this and this is something that uh, we'll get used to over time as with anything. Um, yeah, you're going to have uh, the odd people who are not going to like the new way of doing things, but, you know, that's just the way it goes. But, yeah, I, I think I think the pastor and the diaconate have really thought this out uh, very clearly and uh, I think this is uh, quite a bright future for the way in which the church can go forward following the lockdown. Have you got any towels?